Frank Zappa, who is one of the most innovative and uh, prolific, most interesting musicians, uh, nastiest, most irreverent, he's terrific. And he's gonna, yes, all of those things, and he's going to be here to talk to us. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back in just a couple of minutes. Hello, out here. I'm going to say Francais de Los Angeles, a French bilingual school. We've learned a lot about it. We now have the great pleasure of introducing, introducing you to Frank Zappa, one of the most innovative, prolific, interesting musicians in the world right now. This is what they say about him, one of the nastiest, <laughs> one of the most irreverent, uh, a man who just gave me one of the best back rubs I've ever had in my life. Welcome, Frank. How are you? Hi there. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. You got a haircut. That's right. 27 albums. Yeah. This man has put out 27 albums. This one, Shake Your Booty, that everybody mm. knows and loves. Joe's Garage is the new one, right? It's a rock opera. Yeah, there's Joe's Garage. Tell me about it. Uh, it was originally put together to be a three record set and this is the I had to split it into two parts because of the economic conditions in our country this is the first part and then there's another part that's got two records in it now what do you mean because of the economic conditions in our country well let's just talk about fiscal responsibility for a while you know our, our mm -hmm. government isn't exactly crawling with fiscal responsibility and makes <laughs> makes things rough yeah, you've got a single coming out that's called I Don't Want to Get Drafted, right? That's right. This is another statement. Uh, how, how do you feel about I, what's going on? Well, the way I feel is that I... <laughs> military strength is very important to our country, but I don't think that uh, the technique of using the draft as an issue during an election year to make certain candidates look good is a very nice thing to do to a certain part of our population because uh, let's face it if there's going to be a war it's going to be a push and push button war with uh, things that blow up really big or gas that kills you right away and just sticking people into uniforms and and making them act in a unfortunate way i don't think that's the way to do it you know if you frank zappa were running things were running this country do you have any answers certainly tell us <laughs> not here really that's right well you mentioned fiscal responsibility do you think there's any way that we can get the country off this inflationary spiral well i never thought it would come to this but you know i saw george putnam on television last night and he was talking about all these kind of things and i've always felt that george was a very conservative kind of a person and you know what he was saying some stuff last night that i thought was really smart he doesn't always say things that i think are smart but well, when i find myself agreeing with george putnam i begin to wonder as a matter of fact i've I've, uh, I've read a lot about you, as everybody has. You've been in the music business for a long, long time. This man started the Mothers of Invention back in the mid-60s, and uh, from there it was history. And the things that are written about you are, he comes off like a wild man. He used to have the hair down here, you know. But as a matter of fact, deep down underneath all that, he's a rather conservative fellow. Would you agree with that? I'm, I'm probably even more conservative now than uh, I was a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> the, the more the country gets into the, right. the shape it's in. You're a local boy. You were born in Baltimore, but you brought up in San Diego and, uh, and Lancaster up in the high desert country, Southern California. Um, what kind of a kid were you in, back in high school? I was naughty. That's what I hear. Got yeah. thrown out of school all the time. Yeah, that's true. They were very happy to be rid of me, and I was happy to be rid of them. <laughs> but you really, uh, you really loved music. From the time yeah, you and that's were. one of the reasons why I didn't like school, because I always felt that what I was being trained to do in school was to grow up to be a consumer and, and not have any uh, have a chance to uh, do anything that would improve the quality of my life or to participate in anything that was beautiful or interesting. It was really drudgery. So here you are, and um, a, a lot of... You've, you've got yourself in a lot of trouble with your music along the way, too. Uh, well, that's not exactly you, true. That is, well, the, the Jewish princes made a lot of people mad. The Anti-Defamation League were going to take you into court. Then you fixed everything is, by doing also, Catholic girls. This is also not true. There was never any question of the Anti-Defamation League taking me to court. Uh -huh. As the Anti-Defamation League um, used the song Jewish Princess to obtain a certain amount of public relations value for their organization. There was no lawsuit. I mean, this is there was never even anything mm -hmm. in the paper that said lawsuit. And that's just people misreading what was actually printed in newspapers. But people do get very sober-sided, don't they? I mean, uh, um, you've got a terrific sense of humor. You use it. You use it in your lyrics. You use it in your music. Uh, you offend some people. 
Does that different. bother you? No, it doesn't bother me. I, the, the only thing I feel about that is I feel sorry for people who can't laugh at things. Because uh, once you stop laughing, then you're really in a lot of trouble. And uh, if you want to go back to the Jewish princess business for a moment, uh, let's, let's just say that if there weren't Jewish princesses, uh, they would have a point. But unfortunately, they exist. Or fortunately, depending on your viewpoint. All I did was state the fact that uh, they're out there and the song says, I want one. So you were you saying, know. fortunately, they exist because right. you kind of like them, right? So, you know, why should they be uh, getting on my case? But you are, I think, uh, this is something that that um, everybody in the business knows, in the music business, you are a very serious composer and very well respected by your peers. You care about music a lot, don't you? Well, of course. Did you study it? Yeah. Where? In the library and uh, by listening to records. You've got a movie coming out, too. In June. Yeah. Yeah, you produced it, you're starring in it, you yep. wrote it. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. All of that. Tell, yeah. tell us about that. It's called Baby Snakes, and it'll be coming out in June. Good. It's about people who do stuff that's not normal. It's people like you. Well, I'm one of the people in the movie that's doing not normal stuff. There are other people. Do you like the movie? Yes. And you'll like the movie, too. I know you will. Really? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you look like the kind of a person that really needs to see that movie. I'm telling I... you, Kelly, when I was rubbing your neck and I found out how stiff you actually were, I said to myself, <laughs> here is a woman that <laughs> needs did. to see baby snakes. This girl craves baby snakes. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be first in line. Yes, I did. I said, uh, I was getting How's a little... your headache? It's going... It's, it's fine. It's Thank getting you. worse, yeah. isn't it? Ask me some more questions. <laughs> no, it's... it's it helped. Did it it really? helped. You have four kids. That's right. Yeah. Tell their names. Moon, Dweezil, Amit, and Diva. And they are how old? They range in age from 13 to 7 months. And you don't think that they'll ever grow up and want to change their names to Tom and Debbie? And <laughs> I would be amazed if they did, but they always have that option. Unless, of course, the laws of our great country are changed to preclude it. What made you give them these names? Well, why not, right? You know, <laughs> when you when you release an album, you have the problem of what are you going to call it, and mm -hmm. when you have a child, you have the same problem, and you try and um, get the name to go with the um, event. And, and Moon was. Moon was that that was her name. That's the, what she should have been called. <laughs> was it close to the moon landing? Or? No. You are a good family man. You betcha. You've lived in the same neighborhood for a lot. I mean, people get the idea that you're, you know, scattered. And as a matter of fact, here you are. You show up with a suit and tie and uh, got your hair cut, all cleaned up. And Kelly, I can't help it. I'm really a nice person. I'm a groovy guy. I'm also conservative. And how's your headache, Kelly? It's just fine. What's got? What? What else you got in the in the hopper besides the movie? We're getting ready single? to do a tour and. Uh, we will actually be playing in Los Angeles on Easter Sunday at the sports arena. I think it's sold out, so too bad. But oh, I'm sorry. I'll we could get you in there if you want another headache. Do you like Los Angeles? I don't like Los Angeles. I think that it's really sad here. Why do you live here? Well, when I first came here, I thought that it was a nice place because uh, there was a lot of activity and uh, musical activity and artistic activity. Mm -hmm. That was in the early 60s. But there came a time when the people who were doing a lot of these things started getting harassed by the police and the policies of the city government and the policies of the police department in Los Angeles drove a lot of what you could consider the artistic element out of town. Uh, around 1965 or 66, it was impossible to find a place to uh, work if you're a rock and roll musician and you want to play in Hollywood because mm. the clubs were being squeezed out of business. And so uh, we moved away. And, uh, and you're back. Uh, well, I came back because uh, after moving to New York and working there for a while, um, and also having uh, a child, it, it's very difficult for my imagination to, to think of raising a kid in New York. Right, if L.A. is bad, New York is worse. Frank Zappa, musician extraordinaire, uh, back rubber, <laughs> may I say. Thanks for coming down okay. and spending some time with us. Bye. Bye. We'll be right back with Donald Sutherland and his family.